This episode is brought to you by Snapple. Want to know another Snapple fact? The first hot air balloon passengers were a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. Ridiculous. Check out Snapple.com to find ridiculously flavored Snapple near you. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. This woman has interjected herself into your marriage. She is sleeping with your husband. It's not clear to you which one of these you want, right? I want both of them. Jessica and I became best friends. Little did I know she was having an affair with my husband. If I had a say, he would not be sleeping with his wife. It's a love triangle. He says, while Carly was at work, Jess and I had sex everywhere. Cars, parks, hotels, her marriage bed. And there are three sides. You're not going back off now, right? You want to leave with her husband. Yes. To this story. Are you offended? Yes, I'm very offended that she does not give him the love that he deserves. <laughs> You're offended at her? Let's do it. If we're going to do something here that matters, then we got to deal with the truth. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Ready, three, take. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. Okay, take a look at this couple. Aren't they cute? They're young and obviously so in love. The problem is he's a married man and he is not married to her. In fact, she was a bridesmaid in his wedding to this woman, his wife Carly. Now it is a tangled love triangle that we are unraveling today. Take a look. I'm in love with my wife Carly. I am my mistress, Jessica, and I don't know what to do about it. Mikey is having an affair with his cousin's wife, Jessica. There was always something about Jessica. There's something about her I always was attracted to. I was actually the best man in their wedding. We've been together for seven years. One, two, three. Mikey and I have a three-year-old son together. Jessica and I hung out every day. We became best friends. Little did I know she was having an affair with my husband. Jessica and I started texting. We would like to have sex with each other. We ended up making a deal where we would do it once before we got married. Jessica was flirtatious to Mikey, almost like they were closer friends than Jessica and I were. We were having sex multiple times a week. I was cheating on Carly while we were engaged to get married. I had no idea the affair was going on. We stopped having sex before I got married for a few weeks. Jessica and I ended up having sex within a week after I was home from my honeymoon. And once we spent more time together, I really started falling in love with her. I found out about the affair. I felt like I couldn't breathe. I felt like there was no way this was the Mikey that I married. There was no way this was my life. It was a horrible nightmare. Besides the fact that I enjoyed the sex and I enjoyed her company, I had a wife and my son at home who loved me. What hurts the most is losing your whole life all in one day and never knowing if you're going to get it back. I don't regret anything that I've done with Jessica because it's been the best year of my life. I know for a fact I love them both. In my perfect world, I would have them both by my side for the rest of my life. OK. Now, you go by Michael or Mikey? Michael. Michael? Yes, sir. OK. Now, you, you wrote to me, right? Yes, sir. And what is your hope? for being here today. What would be the home run outcome for you? For me personally? Right. Would be to leave here with both of them. <laughs> to leave here with both of them? Yes, sir. So there would be you and your now wife, Carly, and then Jessica, and then you have a child with Carly, and she has a child, <laughs> because she is married also, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and in fact, I, I, let's take a look at the wedding pictures so I can get the kind of the, the seating chart all right here, the dance card. Uh, this is you with your wife on the left, right? That yes, was sir. at your wedding? Yes, sir. Okay, and then that's you sitting next to Jessica. Yes, sir. At her wedding? Yes, sir. So you were in her wedding? Yes, sir. What, 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 I was the best man. You were the best man in her wedding? Yes, and sir. And she married your... Cousin. Cousin. Yes, sir. 
Okay, so she married your cousin. You were the best man. They have a child. Yes, sir. Okay. And were you happy in that picture with your wife? Very much so. Were you happy in that picture with Jessica? I'm not sure how I felt in that picture. Yeah, why would you not be happy then? You didn't want her to get married? I'm not sure how. I, I wanted them to get married. Okay. But you, t you and Jessica were having an affair. Yes, sir. She became your mistress. Yes, sir. Before you got married. Yes, sir. And before she got married. Correct. Did you ever think about just getting married? No, sir. Tell me why not. The original agreement was to stop when we got married. And then both couples would live happily ever after and just be passed. But that fell apart. Yes, sir. Because you decided, after you got married, you decided to have sex one more time? And was it just going to be that one time, or were you just starting back up? I guess it was just starting back up. So your home run, your, your dream scenario, would be for me to convince these two women that it would be reasonable to have a three-way relationship and just all live together under one roof and, and be happy. I wouldn't want you to have to convince them of that because I'd want them to do it because they wanted to do it. Okay, so you just want them to want to. I guess so. All right, well, let's, let's meet these women. Um, Jessica, who's having an affair with Michael, and his wife, Carly. Will you all come on out? Okay, I'm going to let you all decide where you sit. I'm going to sit by him. Where, where do you want to sit? Side of him. Pardon? On the side of him. You, you want to sit there? There or there. Well, there's not a chair there. Can we move it? Pardon me? Can we move it? Can we move it? No, we're not, we can't move it because the camera angles and all that sort of thing. Well, it's about a love triangle. Huh? It's about a love triangle. Well, no, it's about the way the lights are and all that. But... Do you resent her sitting next to her husband? No. But you'd rather be there mm -hmm. and have her over here. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. But you want to sit there. Yes, I do. Tell me why. Because he's my husband and I'm here to try to work on our marriage and get what's mine. Who do you want to sit there? Both of them. Listen, I, I think there are times in life where we come to threshold moments and it's important that at those threshold moments that we have the courage of our convictions, that we have the, the courage of, of, of truth and honesty. We stop telling people what they want to hear. We stop tiptoeing around. We just say it straight out, plain out, and be honest. We just have to resolve to just say, you know what? I'm just going to lay my ears back and just be completely honest here. Good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to tell the truth. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. I mean, do you get what I'm saying? Because yes, we're at that moment. Yes, if you sir. don't get a resolution here today, you're not going to get one. I, I promise you that, because uh, I may not be the, the best there is in the world of psychology, but I tell you what, I do cut to the chase scene. I put verbs in my sentences and get to the bottom line. Yes, sir. So, so to do that, and, and you're going to get in my way if you don't tell the truth. Now, who do you want sitting in that chair? I don't know. Well, man up and give me an answer. I don't have an answer. You don't have an answer. Okay, how do you feel about that? Because let me tell you what he he's not answer. saying. He's not saying he wants you in that chair. I think he genuinely wants us both next to him. Uh-huh. It's a seat for one. If I knew who I wanted sitting here, I wouldn't be on the show right now. Okay. I would have handled it a long time ago. So you're still on the fence. You could go either way? Or maybe I can't go either way. You guys all got here last night, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you sleep with one of these women last night? We all had separate rooms. I slept in my own room. Yeah. Did you have sex with one of these women yesterday here in L.A.? Yes. Did you know what I meant when I said, who'd you sleep with? Mm -hmm. I wasn't clear? Okay, let me be clear. Did you have sex with one of these I girls yes, sir. yesterday? Which yes, one? Sir. Her. My wife. Carly. And when you left town, did you have sex with one of them before you left town to come here? I mean, the few days before? On Sunday. No. Oh, I don't think so. Not very memorable, was it? <laughs> it was, I think it was Saturday. It wasn't with uh, me, I know that. I think it was Saturday. So maybe Saturday you all got together? All right. Um, tell me what your home run is for, for this today. I, I asked him what his home run was. What is yours? 
that I leave with him. I want, I mean, my vows meant so much and we have so much history and I feel like we really were like one. So I don't really see how something like that just ends. Now she, you guys were best friends, right? Mm -hmm. In a sense. Were, were you in either one of you in the other one's wedding? Mm -hmm. We were in each other's wedding. You were in each other's weddings? Mm -hmm. Like bridesmaids? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the home run for you here? What would you like to see happen? I want to be with Mikey. Okay, so what you're saying is she can just go be upset if she needs to. You want to leave with her husband. Yes. So you came here, you want to leave with to her leave husband. With you want to get married to her husband. Yes. Would you be at all concerned when you got married yeah. to her husband that he would have an affair on you with his ex-wife? Yes. So that'd be a concern to you. Mm -hmm. So you'd like her like out of the picture, like move away or something. No. I mean, would you just watch him real close? In my perfect world, it would, we'd all still be friends, but yeah. it's not a perfect world. I know that Carly and Mikey are married. I don't agree with them still having sex, but I deal with it. If I could talk to Carly, I would tell her that I have no plans on backing off or letting Mikey go. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Beat you in a submission. The disturbing video. He abused me. And if that pattern continues, he will abuse my little sister. Now, new allegations against the judge with the belt. I haven't done anything wrong other than discipline my child. My father really needs help. What I have to say to the mother about her role. Take it like a grown woman. Turn over. Then on Thursday, Rebecca Zahau's family says no way she committed suicide. They did not give my sister a fair investigation. What will a new autopsy reveal? Somebody's getting away with her. That's Thursday. I started dating Carly when I was 17. She was 15. We were high school sweethearts, and I loved spending every day with him. It was definitely puppy love. I just knew we were going to be together forever. We were in agreement that nothing would tear us apart until I caught my husband in bed with my best friend. Why are you not upset with him? I am upset with him, but when I look at him, I don't see like a cheater or, I don't know, I just see the person I love. Okay, so. We had a great marriage, so it's not like it was You don't something... see a cheater, you just see the person you love. Is he cheating? Yes, he's still okay, cheating. Okay, so you know that, but you just don't see it. Right. And this woman has interjected herself into your marriage. Right. She is sleeping with your husband. You caught them red-handed in bed, right? Yes, I did. What were they doing when you came in the room? They heard the door open and they were both naked and they just kind of went in opposite directions. Really? She hid behind the door and he went in the bathroom. Okay, you hid behind the door? Why did you hide? I have no idea. <laughs> First instinct. But she eventually sat on the bed and kind of yeah. gave me this look like she was glad and like, oh well. So y'all just had it like a naked interview? Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just looked at her and him and he wouldn't look at me. So I was just like, you know, is this the first time? They wouldn't say anything. I kept asking. She finally said it was the first time because they agreed. They got caught. That's what they would say, that it was the first time. And it so obviously was, wasn't. But it wasn't the first time, was it? Not even close. So how long have, have you actually, you guys, <laughs> been having a, a, a sexual relationship? A little over a year. A little over a year. And you've been married how long? Not a year yet. Not a, so you were having an affair with her before you got married. Then you yes, decided you were going to stop when you got married. Then you started up yes, again. Sir. Did you ever plan to stop? Um, had yeah. you fallen in love by that point, so you were... I mean, I'd fallen in love by that point, but I knew we had to stop because we were getting married. And you say you're not going back off now, right? You say I, you're, you're unapologetic about this. I mean, not that I'm unapologetic, but I can't let him go. Well, Jessica and her husband are now going through a divorce because she's married, too, as I said, to his cousin because of the affair with Michael. Now... The cousin's not here because he said, you know, just a pox on all of you. I, you know, I just, hell with you. I'm out of here. Um, but Jessica says she doesn't regret the affair one bit. Take a look. 
I am very much in love with Mikey. If I had to decide, I'd rather be with Mikey than be friends with Carly. I know that Carly and Mikey are married. I don't agree with them still having sex, but I deal with it. It makes me feel angry. If I had to say, he would not be sleeping with his wife. At this point, knowing that they still get together really hurts because I feel like we just need a decision. It's either move on with your wife and make things work, or Mikey and I put all of this behind us and just move forward and actually be a family. If I could talk to Carly, I would tell her I love you. I hope one day you can forgive me, but I have no plans on backing off or letting Mikey go. You know how great Mikey is, so I feel you should understand. I am definitely scared I'll never feel this way again about another man as I do for Mikey. Does it upset you to watch that video? Very. What, what, what about it upsets you? That that should be me? I mean, look, I mean, they look like... It's sickening, it really is. It's just like, everything he has said to me over the years and leading up to the wedding and after the wedding, and it's like, when I called him, like texting and the way they would... <laughs> it's just like, no conscience, no guilt. Like, you can just look me in my face, tell me you love me. Promise me forever, she could, you know, smile on my face and just act like nothing is going on. It's just, it almost seems like it's not even human. Like, I don't get how people can be that way. Yeah. Uh, you said that other than this situation, that you're basically an honest person. Other than this, you admit that this is certainly a deceit. But yes, sir. other than this, that you generally are a pretty straightforward, honest person. Yes, sir. Have you been honest with her about your degree of involvement? Yes, sir. With her? So, because we, we asked you about that, and I, and I wrote down what he said. <laughs> you told her that you'd only had sex one time because that was your pre-plan, but he says, quote, Jess and I had sex while Carly was at work several times a week. We had sex everywhere, cars, parks, hotels, uh, her marriage bed, your <laughs> Uh, home on on the couch at your at your house, and according to you, you say you guys were having sex almost every day, uh, right? Um, since <clears throat> I'm sorry. Every day since we got busted. You made a pact to stop, but <coughs> but you didn't. H how do you feel about all of that? I mean, what? you're off at work, and they're. Everywhere, all around, I mean, they're in parks, cars, hotels, your house, their house, just daily. I mean, obviously when I hear that, I'm thinking there's really no hope for us at all because at the time I felt like we were at our happiest, <clears throat> all that was going on, so what's supposed to happen, you know, a year or two down the road or however long when something, you know, we have a patch in our marriage, what is he supposed to do then? Is he going to go find her or just any no, random person? We're at your happiest nature? because of me. I'm sorry, I missed that. They were at their happiest because of me. Oh, I didn't miss it. I thought that. <laughs> That's what you said. So you. We were happy before you, though. Not I mean, completely. He would not have went and seeked out anything okay. else. I'm sorry. He wouldn't what? He wouldn't have seeked out anything else. Okay, so their marriage was at its best because of you. Yes, that even came out of his own mouth. How did that work? What was therapeutic about you for their marriage? He was happy to be with me. I complimented him. I gave him confidence, which hers just felt <clears throat> kind of generic. Oh, yeah, you look good today, basically. Of course you're going to give him compliments. You wanted him. You were in a failing marriage, so he was telling you what bothered, he was telling you what bothered him about me. So, of course you're going to be like, okay, let me, okay, that bothers you because she doesn't do this, so No, and that's this. the thing. He never had to tell me that. Okay. Well, yeah, you were my friend, so I'm sure I was telling you no, that. No, so you, you weren't knew. because you were pretty fake. Well, it was pretty, oh, because I didn't want to tell you what was going on in my marriage. No, okay. I'm not asking you to tell me. Yeah, but I, you were with us, so you knew. My, Carly, you know me and you were not close till okay. towards the end. Okay. Uh, should I get my phone and prove that text message that okay. we talked about that last night? I know that, that's, but that's not the question we're you talking about, about right now. You talked about what the last night? Basically, that she knows that we were not close through all of this. We did not start getting close till we started. Even after planning the wedding, she knew that, that we weren't real friends, basically. That the two yeah. of you weren't mm -hmm. real we friends? We weren't. We just, we've been on and off again friends for years. And 
Well, I, I guess she called that one pretty right then, didn't she? You, I mean, are you criticizing her because she didn't cozy no, up to not, you? Because in fact, at the time her. that you were not cozy not enough, you were sleeping with her husband. Yes, I was. I feel like the whole complimenting thing, he kind of stopped listening to what I had to say because she was there, you know, he was, he was listening more to her compliments than mine. Are you offended? Yeah. Yes, I'm very offended that she does not give him the love and the compliments that he deserves. <laughs> You're offended. Yes, I am. <laughs> You're offended at her? Yes. Did you sleep with her husband? Yes. Don't want to bring that out? We can bring it up, Jessica. Let's bring it up. I slept with her husband after this happened, yes. Oh, after this Yes. Happened. Do you object to her sleeping with her husband while of you course. were sleeping with her wife? Of course. You do? You... Yeah. <laughs> of course I do. Do you think that's hypocritical? Yes, very much so. You think it's hypocritical? Yeah. But yes, yet... Sir. You're being honest, so it you say, mean yeah, I, don't feel that way. I still feel it, even yeah. though I recognize of that course. it's kind of hypocritical. Of course. Um, okay, we're going to take a quick break. Michael says that he loves both of these women equally, and he has a solution to keeping this together. We're, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. We'll be right back. I think I can make them both happy. When the idea first came up, I was very open to it. We were going to give it a try. But Carly changed her mind less than 12 hours later. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Hi, I'm Chris Gethard, and I'm very excited to tell you about Beautiful Anonymous, a podcast where I talk to random people on the phone. I tweet out a phone number. Thousands of people try to call talk to one of them they stay anonymous i can't hang up that's all the rules i never know what's going to happen we get serious ones i've talked with meth dealers on their way to prison i've talked to people who survived mass shootings crazy funny ones i talked to a guy with a goose laugh somebody who dresses up as a pirate on the weekends i never know what's going to happen it's a great show subscribe today beautiful anonymous friday on dr phil please welcome adam sandler it's twice the laughs with one of Hollywood's funniest stars. Was the Gap Girl the first time you ever did anything in drag? Comedy-wise, yes. <laughs> How we doing? Where he gets in touch with his feminine okay, side. Okay. I had to shave my legs like once a week. What happens to you <laughs> when you put the dress on? Adam and Dr. Phil talk parenthood, oh. playing a twin, and more. Robin actually knows your mom. How did that happen? Well, we were at the same beauty shop one day, getting our hair color done. My mother has always told me she doesn't color her hair, so thank uh -oh. you. And find out Dr. Phil's advice for Adam. My wife loves you more than anything. And on my drive over here, was saying, please have him reprogram you. Actually, she faxed me over a list. <laughs> That's Friday. Carly has always been kind of one of those people who kind of mold herself into whomever she's around. I really didn't like her that much until like I started seeing her through Mikey's eyes. Mikey and I have a lot more in common than they do. I just don't think she's the right girl for him. I think she could move on and find someone a lot more like her. Well, that's what Jessica thinks about Michael's wife, Carly. Let's see what Carly thinks about Jessica. 
I'm just so angry. I don't even see how one friend could look their friend in the eyes and just not care. I have no guilt at all about it. I definitely felt like Jessica was always trying to one-up me. I got pregnant, she got pregnant. I got engaged, she got engaged. We were looking for houses, she started looking for houses. I had breast augmentation surgery, she had breast augmentation surgery. The amount of betrayal and hurt and sadness and anger is built up inside of me and I doubt we could ever be friends again. Doubt we can ever be friends again. The amount of texts I got, yeah, okay. we will be friends and you again. Never, and you never been like that before? You never went, you were hot and cold where you want to be my friend and then not talk to me the next day? Yes, I want to be your friend. Okay. That was the whole deal through all of okay. this. And I we still both love felt you and I still way. want to be with okay. you. <laughs> we both were like that. But I don't get why you can, how you can laugh at that. That's because that's ridiculous. Trying to one up you, sweetheart. That is how I feel, and that is that. That came from his mouth. What is ridiculous? Trying to one up her, like I would ever get pregnant on purpose. No, Come I know that, now. and I've said that. Obviously. Yeah, I'm just was trying to one up you. You got pregnant. I, I got know. pregnant. Yeah. That was just how I felt. I felt okay. like you were just. I'm sorry you felt that way. Do you think that these two will ever be peaceful with each other? Sure, because they talked last night. They hung out several times last week. So y'all hung out last week? What'd you do? It, we went to the movies. You it went didn't... to the movies together? <laughs> <laughs> we, okay, we, first of all, we were all talking about the three-way. Obviously, we were good friends at one time. We both love him. We had great times together as three, so we thought it could maybe work. We talked about it, we would fight, we th think it can work, we have a lot of fun, let's try. So we, we, I went to her house to talk to her about it. It was okay, next morning we're back to square one where neither one of us want that. We want them alone. We talk, we're mad at each other, we think it might work. Okay, let's just go to the movies and forget about it all. We go, even while we're there, there's tension. We know, deep down, we know that it can't work. We're just trying to see, because we're just hoping for answers. She says deep down she knows it can't work, but after three months, I get a text saying, yes, I said we're going to try the three-way relationship, and I think that's what I always wanted. I just didn't want to want that. Let, let me go back over some of this, because I'm just an old country boy from <laughs> Texas. And I, you, you're his wife, and this is his mistress. You catch them. You, you find out that they've been having this ongoing, intimate relationship. Not just sexual, but really intimate. Yeah. And you find out about all that. And then under some theory, you go to her house to recruit her into a three-way relationship where you just all live together. How'd that go? I mean, when I went to her house... We were just talking about the positives of it, you know, pretty much. What would those be? I mean, I can't speak for her, but I just feel like we were both kind of desperate to just find an answer. But desperate doesn't say, I always wanted this. Are you like James Bond or something? I mean, <laughs> you... I wasn't the one that put all that together that day. When they talked, no, it was I your wasn't, wife. When, I, when they talked, I wasn't there. They came to me with the ideas and how it was going to work and the positives and all this. They came to me with that, and I told them, if we're going to do it, we need to commit to something, not to say we're going to do it, next day, no. Then a few days later, say we're going to do it, next day, no. Say, so, but that's what happened. Wow. I need a break. <laughs> um, next, why Michael says divorce, in his view, is not an option. We'll be right back. I lost my job, our apartment, being with my wife and son every day. I lost my husband, my home. Christian's missing out on things. It's all worth it because I am in love with Mikey and I know that we can move past this. Closed captioning provided by... After I got caught having sex with another woman, I lost my whole life as I knew it. I lost my job, our apartment, my loss, being with my wife and son every day. Everything just changed in that moment. I lost my husband, but I don't really feel he's that big of a loss. But losing my home really hurts. 
The part that hurts the most is splitting up their son's family. Christian's missing out on things. I feel like Mikey abandoned us for Jessica. It's all worth it because I am in love with Mikey and I know that we can move past this and it be for all the right reasons. I don't want to divorce Carly. I want Carly to be my wife for the rest of my life. But I want Jessica to be my wife also for the rest of my life. Okay, so that's a fair representation of what in a perfect world you would like. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you believe that it is remotely realistic that these two women are just going to like become sister wives and live with you? Do you think that's a, a realistic possibility or do you think that while it's what you would like, probably ain't going to happen? At one time, I felt like it was a strong possibility. Now, I still don't think it's impossible, but slim to none, but I still think it's possible. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's play out some scenarios here. <coughs> let's assume that it's not a possibility. What are you going to do? That's happened over the last three months, more than once, and here we are, same situation. If you, if you had to make a decision right now, you, you, you had to push a button. You had to push a Carly button or a Jessica button. Which button would you push? Me and Jessica get along great, and I love being with her, and me and her get together and we fight and argue, but I understand why. So it'd be very easy for me right now just to say Jessica and we go on and, but a month from now or two days from now or a few hours from now, I might be laying next to Jessica and think I made the wrong decision and I don't want to do this and I want Carly. But you see, part of the process of, of maturation where you, you, you mature into different stages and phases in your life is you recognize that you have to make choices and then you have to live with those choices. And sometimes you make the right decision and sometimes you make the decision right. And, and, but one way or another, you, you work to come out the other end in a way that your life is not in a shambles emotionally or relationally or otherwise. And, and, and that's where you are. Because let, let, me, let me ask you something. Are you waiting for him to decide what happens to your life? I feel like I play different scenarios in my head. Like I feel like maybe it is on his hands, but then again, sometimes <clears throat> I'm thinking, what am I even fighting for? I tell her every day, let's talk. Every day she tells me, not today, not today, not today. She's just going on, you know, doing whatever she wants to do. So finally, she talked to me. She said, you know, what's up? And I told her this, we need to talk and decide where our life's going to go. What hope do we have as a couple? What? And she basically sat there texting and like, OK, when is this conversation going to be over so I can leave? And when she got up to leave, I said, if there's any chance for us, stay and talk. Don't leave. And she said, there's no chance for us. We're done. She left. Yeah, I did feel like there was no chance for us. Because you, we weren't spending time together. There, we weren't going anywhere. It wasn't about, you said you were hanging out with other guys and it's helping you get over me. <clears throat> and you didn't love me that way anymore. I never said that. I never said I did not love you that way anymore. I never said that. new Dr. Phil. Over the, bed. the disturbing video. Now, new allegations against the judge with the belt. I haven't done anything wrong other than discipline my child. Ah! That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... I know that Mikey can't just drop his feelings for Jessica, so even if we were to get back together, he would still have feelings for her, and I'm not really sure how I could deal with that. I don't want to be with him if he's going to want to be with her or if he's going to think about her when we're trying to better our marriage when a piece of his heart is somewhere else. You know, there is an amazing dynamic going on here. You two are self-righteous and offended. You're offended at her because she has the audacity to be in your way. You're frustrated with her because she's ambivalent about you being with another woman. It's not it, just about me being with her, though. It's about everything. So but this catch-22 you're in, you manufactured. Yes, you're right. You're right. You, you did. You, yeah. you created this. You're, how, do you, how do you feel about the fact that you're not enough for him? 
am enough for him. No, obviously you're not because he wants her too. You're not enough. So then he she's wants not her enough too. Either. Well, I'll get to her in a minute. I'm asking you, how do you feel about that? I feel like I'm enough. Well, then what, what is she, uh, a potted plant? I never said I can't be with either one of them. Obviously, if the chances of all three of us not being together, of course I want to be one of them. I Which just... one? Don't know. Are, you, you guys are missing something here because you're saying neither one of them is the clear standout choice for you, right? Is that crazy? Little bit. <laughs> You're being naive if, if you're saying, no, I'm enough. I'm the one. He, he, I know that he wants me because th that isn't clear to him, is it? It's not clear to you which one of these you want, right? I want both of them. It's clear to me that I want both of them. There's an old scenario about this where you put a haystack over here and a haystack <laughs> over here and you stand a, a mule right in the middle and it starves to death because it can't decide which way to go. Uh, no, I want to go. And then you come up and you found a dead mule in the middle of the haystacks because he can't pick a haystack. So he's got a conflict. He doesn't know which way to go. So you find a dead mule. And I don't mean to call you all haystacks, but <laughs> and I certainly don't mean to call you a mule, although you are stubborn, right? You're very stubborn and not, you, you don't want to give this up. You want to find a way to have them both, right? I mean, they fueled the fire of the three-way, too, and to make me think that that could work and to want to keep fighting for the it. The relationship where y'all lived yes, in the sir. same house. Yes, sir. I've been doing this longer than you've been alive. And there ain't one chance in 10 million this is going to work. It will never, ever, never work where you have them both. It just, there, is, there is no theory under which it will work. There's no way it will work. You, they could even agree that it would work, and you could go sit down and say, all right, let's start doing it. It would not work. Not ever, never, ever will it work. Okay. Now, your mother has a view of this, right? Um, let's hear what she has to say. Mikey, I honestly am shocked about the affair. I do think you should be ashamed of yourself. I really wish that you would wake up and realize what you are about to lose if you haven't already lost it. You're being very self-centered, not thinking about your family, not thinking about your son. Did you think the affair would just go on and on? I mean, what were you thinking? She brings up a good point with your son. Mm -hmm. what, what's your thought about that? Do you think this flies above his awareness so it's not impacting him yet? No, I mean, to a level, but I mean, I think it's impacting. Not living at home with mom and dad. Do, do you feel at all bad about disrupting this family? You don't feel bad about disrupting her marriage, but you do feel bad about the family. I never aspect. said I didn't feel bad about it. Really? Do you I feel bad about it? I know my actions are showing differently, but it's not like I don't care about her. Mm -hmm. I just care about him, and I don't, I mean, I can't let go. And Sorry isn't going to cover it, but I just can't. What you're doing is you're, you're interloping into someone else's marriage. And I can tell you that, that relationships that are born from infidelity almost never, ever work. Just, I mean, statistically, across time, and everybody that's in it thinks they're the exception. Mm -hmm. But they just don't ever work. I'm, I'm just telling you all the truth. And I'm going to also tell you that the best predictor of future behavior is relevant past behavior. You know, if you're hiring somebody and you want to know if they're going to steal from you, you can give them 10 psychological tests or you can call their prior employees and find out they stole from them. Because if they stole from them, they're going to steal from you. And if the boy's cheating on you, there's a good chance he's going to cheat on you in the future. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So no one should get in a relationship with either one of us ever again? It's a high-risk investment. You need to finish one relationship before you start another one. You need to cut her out of your life and work on this relationship if you are willing to do that. 
And if you are willing to do that, a lot of people are going to ask why. It may simply be time for you to accept reality and move on. He is a high-risk candidate, and the chance that these two are going to stop what they're doing is close to zero. Would you say that's right? Would you say that's right? I mean, th th these are the realities. Is there any more answer than that that you need? You're young. You can remarry. You can have, find someone in your life that treats you with dignity and respect because you are not being treated. You are not being treated with dignity and respect now. You are being disrespected. And he does not look at you the way he looks at her. And you know that. A three-way relationship is absolutely, unequivocally not going to work. He is an extremely high-risk candidate for you to stay in a marriage with. You are a high-risk candidate for anybody to get in a relationship with, including you. Because, I mean, you may think you're Romeo and that you're different, but if she'll do it with you, she'll do it to you. And if he'll do it with you, he'll do it to you. I know you all think you're the exception to that because you, you have this famous love, but I, I just don't think that's true. So you two either need to get into some serious therapy to try to work out a marriage and, and some maturity in that marriage. And I'm happy to provide that for you if you want that. I will make arrangements for you back home to have some professional marriage counseling that will, that will give you whatever chance you're going to have of making this work. We'll do it at our expense. We'll arrange it for you. We'll make it, we'll make it possible. But I can tell you the first thing that therapist is going to do is say, you've got to get out of a relationship with her. There's an old saying in Texas, you can't ride two horses with one ass. <laughs> You've got to make a decision and commit to it. And if you want that, I will do it. But I'm, t I'm just being honest with you. They will tell you the first thing you have to do is stop this relationship <laughs> with her. And if he's not willing to do that, your path is clear. You need to file for divorce. You need to move on and, and do something else in your life and get what you truly deserve. And you believe she deserves somebody that's committed to her, do you not? Very much so. And if that's not him, then do it. The only thing worse than being in a toxic relationship for a year is being in it for a year and a day. The only thing worse than a year and a day is a year and two days. You've got to move on and get out. Are you at all interested in doing any type of marital work here? Of course I would like to work on my marriage but I'm not sure I can 100% commit to that. W would you like to do that? I mean, would you, if I arranged for you to have a therapist to sit down with y'all, would you, would you want to do that? I wasn't very confident with his answer. I, mean, I really feel like... Yeah, you may not go beyond one session, but I mean, would you like to try it and see if there's something there to work with? Of course I do. And maybe, you know, what it may turn into is just some support for you to implement a decision and act on it. Um, <laughs> How would you feel about them going into therapy to work on their marriage? And if that therapist said, you need to stay out of here and give them a chance to work this out, would you do that? I promise. You promise you would do that? Have you had a change of heart about that since you got here? I changed my heart about my kids. I'm just tired of doing all the wrong things. Well, maybe it's time to start doing some of the right things for you and your child and, and, uh, and let these people work on doing the right things for them. We'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... If you would like to purchase a DVD or transcript of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. You know, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is life is about choices. The bad news is life is about choices. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. We really have to make choices. And it's not always easy. And like I say, sometimes you just have to, to commit to something and go in that direction. 
And I know I'm going to hear from you on the message boards about this. I, I wish all three of these young people well. Um, if you're in a similar situation and you need advice or to learn more about today's guest, log on to my website, drphil.com. And thanks for being here. So long. I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is life is about choices. The bad news is life is about choices. <laughs> I mean, it's not easy. We really have to make choices. And it's not always easy. And like I say, sometimes you just have to, to commit to something and go in that direction. <laughs> And I know I'm going to hear from you on the message boards about this. I, I wish all three of these young people well. Um, if you're in a similar situation and you need advice or to learn more about today's guest, log on to my website, drphil.com. And thanks for being here. So long. <laughs>